The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to have a good day today, folks. We're going to have Tom Hugard call in in about 20 minutes, and we'll be able to chat with him a little bit. We've got some questions for him from you folks. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, German DAX. As you can see, we've had some nice swings in the German DAX. It's following the numbers, you know, pretty much as expected. But, folks, we have to take a look at one that, you know, I, I hear a lot of a lot of uh, chatter, of course, of, uh, you know, whether these numbers mean anything or not. But just remember, we had a major report today, a big surprise. But just take a look here uh, at the E-mini S&P that we have here. You'll notice that that 3070 number, that was our profit, uh, excuse me, that was the, the first price objective we were looking for around 3076. That was the ABCD pattern between December 1st and December 3rd. The market then rallied up exactly to the 61% retracement 3125 drop 20 handles right down to the exact 61% retracement at 3104 from that level we've gone up and we're almost in fact we've hit it already at 31 uh, 38 the 78% level and it's also the 1.2 27 expansion of the move from December 5th when we went drop to 20 handles. So this is a very, very important number here around 3140 uh, in the E-mini S&P. Uh, closing above that would uh, uh, tell you that you're most probably getting ready uh, to make a new high. That's that, And that's certainly possible given things that are going on uh, in the world. One slightest little tweet. And then today's report was really a very, very interesting one because it was uh, far, far superior than uh, anybody would ever have thought. But that's the way reports are. And that's one of the things we're going to be asking Tom when he gets uh, on the air with us this morning about how he handles reports. Okay, let's Let's make a uh, let's make a, a couple of quick uh, comments here that we want to cover here. I want to do uh, uh, the footsie here because we have quite a few folks here uh, from the UK that listen to us. We'll get this up here this morning, and you'll see here that uh, we had this really nice uh, uh, pattern here uh, in the British pound. Excuse me, British pound in the FTSE that stopped almost well, it stopped exactly at 707, which is this reciprocal of the square root of two. And you'll notice that you'll see that again several times on this chart. But let's let's move on to just a little bit uh, something a little bit closer to home, and that is this natural gas that we've been watching for a very, very long time. Let's get this chart up and take a quick look at it because we are very, very close here to. Um, completing this 135 pattern. The 1 is down there on August the 5th. The 3 is there on October the 10th. And here we are. We've, I think we've already made it on December the 2nd. Now, there's a chance we could go down one more time, but I don't believe that'll be the case. And the reason for that is the fact that you have a perfect ABCD pattern here in natural gas starting on November 4th. You came down. You rallied up exactly to the 61% retracement. Again, it must have been a coincidence. And that was the gap. You see that island reversal that was up there? And if you remember, look closely at this natural gas, folks. I put that high there at 280, excuse me, 290. That completed the A, B, C, D pattern from August the 5th. Perfect. I mean, it couldn't have been any more perfect. Now, that was also a 38% retracement of a high we made way back uh, earlier in the year. So that's why this is so very important. Look how many days it came down. Came down nine days, rallied up, down seven. So, you know, eight, actually eight. So nine and eight, I mean, right on the money. So this should be a bottom here in natural gas as long as we can stay above 228. We're trading around 240. 
one right now, I believe. So we'll just keep a very close eye on that. That's a, a pretty good, pretty good one to look at. Now, the other one that's really interesting is uh, Mr. Z has been kind enough to. Uh, I don't know if he posted these or not, but I'm going to try to to get these in here so that you folks can take a look at them because he's had some really nice charts here. Oh, no. Yeah, here we are. I still got them. Stay with me, folks, and we'll be uh, right with those charts that we've got from Mr. Z because they're really a couple of really nice ones here. The first one here we're going to take a look at. Let's get this up here is the uh, chart for uh, sugar. Now, we've been bullish these for quite some time. As you know, we, we talk about those in the letter. You know, sugar's had a really strong uh, support level at that long-term 78% level, landing in uh, pretty much right as expected. And then, of course, the, the really big one here is the coffee. And let's just get this up here uh, on the coffee. This is the uh, March coffee that we'll be watching now. But this was another one that uh, the folks in the Tiger Room uh, Tiger Den Room uh, talked about uh, Ruby, Mr. Z, boy, there were, everybody was uh, piling on once those folks started to say these things gone higher. And we have really gone higher, and so we're starting to accelerate now from higher levels. Remember, these are coming in from very, very low levels, folks. I think the average price of coffee used to be about 289 and you were trading at 125 So you can have a tremendous move in these markets, and so look for retracements here. That's one of the things that we that we try you know to look at here uh, is to see how the retracements are going to happen if in case you know they really do so those are the main things that you want to watch another one we talked about yesterday very very important here I'm going to do um, the chart here from yesterday but I want you to do some homework yourself just to see what happened in the crude oil yesterday now look at this big a b c d pattern we have over the last 14 days that came in at 50 896. The high on the crude yesterday was 59.12. That was within $200. Now, folks, after we hit 59.12, I, I would do this, but you're not going to you're not going to get anything out of it unless you do the work yourself. That's from Mr. Twentyman himself. But just go to your charts, do a 15-minute or 30-minute chart of crude oil yesterday. Folks, we had a $5,000 move in crude oil yesterday. We went up 1,000, down 1,000, up 1,000, down 1,000, and then another 800. $4,800, and now we're starting to break. We, we, we did break the 58 level uh, last night. And that tells us that we're probably made some type of a major high up in this level. How high it's going to go, I don't know. But when that ABCD completed up there, I mean, for the market to chop around like that and make that many swings. And I know it was the time during the um, the, the dudes over in uh, Vienna, what do they call that, the, OIL, the OPEC meeting? I know that they, they react to those tweets or, you know, every time somebody coughs or does anything. But, but to have that kind of a move, that is really a a lot of distribution. Aha. Except for one important fact. If we get above 5912 again, that was not distribution, folks. It'll be accumulation. So it's really important to remember this day or yesterday because of the volatility that we had and all of those swings that occurred. It has all the all the earmarks of a high because you have the ABCD pattern, you have the multiple tests up there at 50, uh, 885, 59, and now you're moving lower, but it could change in any moment. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the gold market here. Uh, we've had a pretty good rally. We rallied from, uh, you know, we went all the way down to 14.48, uh, and then we rallied uh, all the way up to uh, 14.90. Uh, you can see the ABCD pattern that was there that came in at uh, the 14.88 level within a, and a half, within a dollar or so of uh, that objective. And you can see that that was also a 61% retracement of the high we made made, uh, you know, way back in uh, November. So that was a major pattern that occurred. And now we've had this big break today. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the low so far has been 1467 and change, and that is a 78% retracement of the low that we made back here in uh, early December. It's also a 50% retracement of the low that we made on November the 26th. Now, whether this is going to hold or not, you know, remains to be seen. But, you know, we've had a pretty big break today. We've gone from uh, 86 all the way down to 67, so we broke $22. Uh, from the from the high there and from the high at 1490.67, uh, uh, we've come down uh, $23. So we're pretty close uh, to some pretty important areas. But look at this wide-ranging bar, folks. It's pretty dangerous right in here because any move below 1464 would suggest that you know maybe this uh, rally that we've had here is nothing more than a bear market rally. This is a four-hour chart, so it lines up for several days. So you're able to see a pretty good idea idea of what the uh, gold market uh, is actually doing. So that's what we want to keep an eye on this morning. But uh, 1464 will be a key level because breaking below that would tell us that we're heading down. But that big wide ranging bar is a, a little bit uh, a little bit scary. So 
we will pay uh, sort of close attention to that as we watch through there. So if you have any questions, folks, it's 877-927-6648. Now, we, we need to uh, look at a couple other things here that uh, people have asked us about, and one of them here is the situation here in the uh, cryptocurrency arena looking at uh, Bitcoin. As we take a look at Bitcoin, you'll notice here that we've reached some ABCD patterns down here at the uh, 60, uh, 6420 level, and we rallied just very, very slightly. Folks, this is a bearish chart. I mean, we've broken below those lows uh, way back uh, in uh, July, and we've taken them out again in October, and we took them out again in December. These are lower tops. Lower bottoms, this is a big downtrend. So I think the next to support probably is around 5,500 or so uh, in the Bitcoin. But right now, it certainly doesn't look very well. The key to this, folks, if you look at this closely, is if you look back on November the 24th, the day before Thanksgiving, that week of Thanksgiving, you'll notice that uh, Bitcoin had made a perfect 61% retracement of the high way back in August. It was absolutely perfect. It came in at 10,400, and everybody was screaming, you know, Bitcoin got above 10,000. Well, <laughs> it uh, gave about 40% of that. It did. It gave 38% of that back over the, the, the coming three weeks. So that's basically telling you that this market is bearish. We've got lower tops, lower bottoms. It's still bearish. We see no pattern here to think that Bitcoin would have a major rally from this level. This could change overnight, but as we look at this right now, there's no reason to be looking at uh, cryptocurrencies, so whether it's related to blockchains or whatever. We hear a lot of the news about it, but we hear a lot of the news about everything, and I frankly don't understand any of this stuff about cryptocurrencies, but this chart is still bearish. There's nothing. There's no reason to be uh, looking to be a buyer of the cryptocurrencies as you look at it right there. It is a falling angel. You might want to call Call it whatever you want, uh, Mr. Marshall, but by golly, this thing went from 19,900 all the way down to 3,200. So, and we're still way above that. We're still way above that 3,200 level because we, you know, we did have a pretty good rally. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, oh, we have a question here. Uh, take a TV investment guru is looking for the dollar to retreat. You know, that dollar doesn't look too bad to me, uh, Terry. Let's just get it up here to take a quick look at it because, you know, we, we talked about it. Um, well, we talk about the dollar, you know, every week, but we'll take a quick look at it here. It doesn't look very bad to me. And if you look at it today, it's going to look pretty good. So here's where we were, you know, on Sunday. We had that little bit of a back off, and I we're probably trading, I would guess we're somewhere around 98 98.60 now with the move we've seen in the euro because the euro's dropped over 100 pips. So that would... Uh, you know, uh, that would tell us that we're most probably there. I haven't checked the dollar index yet this morning, but I would think that's uh, that's what that's what we're looking at. So we'll see if that is going to be the case, but we won't know uh, whether that's going to, to be uh, going or not. But boy, today is happy Friday. It's hard to believe it's Friday already, folks. So it's going to be interesting. It can't be 97.62. That can't be. I, I, you mean it's down? The dollar's down with the euro down? That doesn't make any sense. Wow, I have to double check that, Terry. But I guess you're right. I, I don't know. I'm not. I can't update while I'm on the show here, so there's no way that I can uh, double check that. Please double check that, Terry, because it shouldn't be at 97.62. 97.62 would be a uh, uh, 97.62 would. Wow, that would be. No, I don't see how that can be. Uh, I, well, <laughs> I'm surprised a lot, but uh, if someone would please check that, I just don't see how that dollar index could be at that price, giving uh, ever since 97.62. There must be something wrong here because, uh, wow, uh, I'll have to update this, but uh, that doesn't make any sense with the euro dropping from 111 down to 109 and change. The dollar index should have gone higher. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't. Uh, I, I will double check this uh, at the break here, but we've got Tom Hugard coming in. I don't want to waste any of that time with that. But when Tom is talking, I will update the uh, the dollar index chart and bring it up here because with that dollar dropping like that, there. Well, 
Um, that doesn't make any sense. But I'll double. A lot of things don't make sense to me. But I will double check it uh, when we take a quick look at that. Uh, update for hogs. Uh, I think the hogs are really just staying in the same area. Let me get this for you, uh, Ruby, because I think that they're pretty much in the uh, in the same area where they were before. Let's get these up here to take a look at it. I'm looking at February hogs now, Ruby, and I believe they're still down here near this level. I don't think they've, uh, they went below it a little bit, but now they're still trading in that uh, 67, 68 range. So uh, it has confirmed. Well, I have to check that dollar index chart because that that's really a surprise to me that the euro could go down like that and the dollar index not go up. That doesn't make any sense, but like I say, I'm a believer that uh, the the uh, thing, thing with the whole discipline. Hey, we got Mr. T on the line now. Tom, are you there? Holy, did I just interrupt you mid-flow? I'm no, so sorry about no, uh, no. your you're just, you're just, No, yeah, no, you're just in time to listen to one of our commercials. Pretty soon you're going to hear the music, and we're going to give a little commercial to the folks, and then in about four minutes we're going to come on with you, and I've got a bunch of questions to ask you and that people have been asking about. So and then I wanted to share, ask you to share a couple of stories, uh, you know, of the way that you've uh, migrated to where you are because uh, you've done a great job. But the main thing I wanted to talk about, Tom, is the way they've treated you uh, in that telegram room that you have because I, I've i been around for a very long time and I have never seen anyone uh, treated as badly as you are, especially when you're doing it for free. So we'll talk about that when we get back from the break. Okay, Tom? Okay. Okay, we'll be right back with Tom Hugard, Trader Tom. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we are talking with Tom Hugard, Trader Tom. Tom, I've got some questions here, and then we will uh, let you discuss whatever you'd like to discuss. Would that be okay? I'm listening. Okay, your first question. There's three. There's three. Three parts to this question, and that relates to what's happened in your your Telegram uh, room that you have with uh, what 2,100 people that come in that pay nothing. Is that correct? Yeah, about 2,500. But yes. Okay, 2,500. The first question is, why do you do it free? And uh, do I get this question number two or number three? Or do I answer question number one first? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll do it question all. number no. one first. <laughs> um, <laughs> why do, why do I do it for free? There's a very easy answer to that, and that is by being accountable to a large group of people, I have enforced a, a very steely discipline to my own trading. So I see it like a quid pro quo. Uh, scenario whereby I'll let people uh, look over the shoulders of a professional trader who will navigate the market too many hours every single day, a bit like you. And But in return, I get their questions, but I also get someone I am accountable for. It means that I cannot let a position run out of control because I know that other people will have followed my call. So for me, Telegram is this uh, enlightening um, distribution channel that favors both the receiver and the giver. Okay, that makes good sense. The second question uh, is related to questions two and three, so I'll add them together. Over the past couple of days, there have been some ruthless comments, and Tom, I've been around for a long time. You and I have been friends for 15, 16 years, and I've never seen anything like this. Uh, where people have actually attacked you on so many different fronts for absolutely no reason. I know there's just a few of them, and you can't do anything, but how do you, the two questions relate to each other. How do you uh, handle it, and why do you put up with it? Okay, so I think... I think life in general, without sounding like a cliche, you're never too old to learn. And I think I need to learn to be a little more, a little more thick-skinned. I, I probably a little bit of context for the people who are listening here. But I, I've basically been calling out live trades now for a few years, and. As, and the reason why I'm doing it, as I mentioned a moment ago, it, it, because I enjoy it. I, I, I like to help people. I make my money trading. I don't sell courses. I don't have any software to sell. I basically just like to help people. And in return for helping people, I actually also help myself. But mm -hmm. I also think that it's much, much – it's too easy. Uh, I think as, a, as, a, as a human beings, we probably need to learn to moderate our language. Just because someone is not standing in front of you doesn't give you the right to tell them whatever you do think. There should be somehow a filter. And to some of these people, I think they, they have trolled me because their frustration – and I, uh, their, their frustration has been that they have perhaps not have been on part of a winning trade. And it actually relates to a very specific mistake that I made. I actually called a trade out too late. I went short the Dow Jones last week, and I only told them after the, the, the trade had been running for about half an hour because I'd been away from my screens. And in hindsight, I shouldn't have told them that because I pride myself of doing absolutely everything in real time. It means that there's no after the facts. But then in order to sort of you know, soften the blow, I showed them all my bad trades that I hadn't called out as well. So I've just been looking over my track record now over the last, uh, uh, last 12 months. And I've generated nearly 9,000 pips or points on behalf in a live trading environment. But... Uh, it, it, it is unpleasant. It, it, of course, it's unpleasant being trolled, but, you know, I'm also 50 years old, and I should just, 
I should just let it wash over my head like my friends are telling me to. But what I'm really hoping to do is to do this for another 20 years because I think this sort of education is much, much better than selling videos and courses and whatever else uh, educators are doing because here people actually get an opportunity to see the, the, the market through the prism of a, a full-time trader operator for, 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 for better or worse because uh, over the last 12 months I may have generated a lot of points, but I also had three losing months. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it doesn't get more real than that. And the reason why I don't charge for it is because if I don't feel like trading a day, I don't have that obligation of having to show up because someone has paid me a subscription fee. If, you wanna, if people want to donate me a book or a glass of wheatgrass juice or whatever, whatever <laughs> want, be my guest, but I have no financial commercial interest in it. It's more like a, call it a lot project. And you know what, and, and, and if I can just add something else, that whole uh, gratitude attitude actually came from you. When I met you in 2004 in Las Vegas, of all places, when you assisted Bryce Gilmore, you know, the father of, of modern trading geometry, which you have been a, an equal contributor. It, there was just this sense of, well, you guys, you're doing it for the love of it, not because you want to score $1,200 out of the participants. And I really resonated with that. No, oh, that's good. Well, you've done a great job. Tom, one of the questions from one of your fans way back in the City Index days is, do you uh, miss the old City Index, and what was the main thing you learned during those times you worked for Michael Spencer? Okay, so, yeah, uh, who wouldn't miss going into a trading floor where it's buzzing every single day and then collect $150,000 a year for it risk-free? I mean, what's there not to love about that? But there also comes a point when you realize this is a young man's game and those long hours, well, you would prefer perhaps to uh, invest those long hours into your own your own trading. And what I learned predominantly from the 10 years that I've worked on the trading floor is just how awful people trading, you know, how, how awful people in general are at trading. Not because they're not intelligent human beings, because they never really thought that trading was anything beyond technical analysis. But it really is. And our own Michael Douglas, rest in peace, you know, he was the greatest proponent in trying to bridge the technical analysis world with the mental analysis world. And he said, it's, it's, it's not one or the other. You, they simply have to walk hand in hand. It takes two to tango. And you'll never become a good trader, like a truly, prof, uh, a, a truly profitable trader, unless you, uh, unless you merge the, the, the spirit side of you with the technical aspects of you. Well, you've certainly done that, Tom. I have to really give you credit. I, I, one of the most vivid memories I have is when we were in New York once, you wanted to go down to the Silver Pits. You're, do you want to tell the folks what happened that day? I know you remember, but uh, it was uh, it was really quite funny. Um, Tom wanted to go down okay. to the knife exchange. Go ahead and tell them what happened, Tom. I'm sure you remember. I remember very vividly, and, and I'm not proud of it. Uh, look, oh, shut up. It was nothing. <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I, was, I walked onto the, 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 I think it was the oil pit and the gold pit and silver pit, and I was just in awe. I, mean, I was a relatively newcomer to the trading arena, and then standing there in a trading pit in the epitome of, of the financial center of the world, New York. And so I did what any 30-year-old will do. He grabs his camera phone, and he tries to take a picture, and this this guy, he must have been a quarterback from some or a uh, defense liner from some American football team. He <laughs> yanked me out of the floor, and I was so embarrassed because it was you who had actually uh, had actually facilitated a contact down there, so I could visit and, and see it for myself. And this guy, he made me stand there for almost like a corporal punishment, and I had to delete the picture that I had taken. I was truly embarrassed and really sorry about whatever repercussions was was bestowed upon you. So yeah, that was a, that was my little flirt with a trading floor. Yeah. That was the closest I ever came to becoming a floor trader. <laughs> yeah, you know, Tom, I never told you, but I paid the $2,500 fine and never said a word. Hey, stay with us. We've got a couple other questions, okay? Okay. Yes. Okay. Tom Hugard, Trader Tom, we'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What should you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're chatting with Tom Hugard of Trader Tom. Tom, uh, one of our, well, more than one, have asked us, how do they access uh, your Telegram room? And is it available? I know you're going to be on vacation for the rest of, uh, uh, till the, the beginning of the year, but how do they go to see you at Telegram? Uh, that's a technical question. Um, I think the best thing is probably to email me, and then I will put them manually onto the uh, to, uh, to the Telegram group, and they, they email me on hello at tradertom.com. And okay, hello. Uh, I should also okay, just add here that uh, any trade that I do is at your responsibility, but there's no clandestine sales pitch here. This is truly free of charge. Is it true that was one of your... That oh. I, sorry, go on. No, you go ahead, Tom. You've got the, you've got the, you've got the mic. Go right ahead. You um, you asked me, what did I learn about working on a trading floor for 10 years? I'd like to put a little bit in, in context what I experienced there, because I think your listeners would benefit greatly from hearing that. The, 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 the company that I worked for had uh, a, a approximately 25,000 active traders, of which 3,000 of them locked in every single day to trade. And when you're sat on the trading floor, your job is basically to manage the book. So if everyone is, is long the S&P 500 as a company, you become short the S&P 500, and then you have to go and manage that risk. And as, as, a, as a slash broker slash trader, your job is to administrate this risk so you can uh, let the, 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 the clients trade uh, freely, but you still make money for the, the book, as it's called. And one of the things that you very quickly realize is that people have a behavioral trait, which seem to be what I call the supermarket mentality. 
and that is that when the markets are falling, they, it, they, they, it's a little bit like they're being uh, fronted with uh, cheap soap or toilet paper or, or, or half-priced meat down the supermarket, and then they'll jump in. <laughs> and that's normal behavior when you are in a supermarket on a Saturday morning, but it's not absolutely the best behavior to, uh, uh, to put forth if you want to make a career in trading by being the one that buys the market just because it is falling and it seems cheaper. See, that's the, that's the perverseness of what we're doing. This has got to be the only industry in the world whereby it makes more sense to buy something today just because it's more expensive today than it was yesterday. So the, the, I think if there was one, one thing that I picked up more than any of the other things that I learned on the trading floor, and we can talk about all the other things perhaps another, another Friday, that is that it is perhaps one out of 10,000 or two out of 10,000 traders that will add to their winning positions. The rest, without a blink of an eye, will add to a losing position because they suffer from the supermarket mentality. But there's something about buying something that has already that has already risen and you're already long of it. Whatever it may be, very few people have the mental capacity to add to their winning positions. But the traders that did that at the brokerage that I worked for, they were truly outstanding traders. Even the owner of City Index, he was the kind of guy that would add to him to his winning positions. And I really admired that because it was something that you saw so rarely. Well, you've certainly made a believer out of a lot of people, including me. I, I, I sent you the uh, email from our friend over in Kiev that has done very well. I'll share it with the folks uh, at another time. But uh, did, would you care to uh, talk a little bit about something like today when we have the jobs reports? How do you handle reports, someone is asking? Losing badly. <laughs> you, see, <laughs> you see, I was actually under the impression that we were headed further down. I shorted the Dow Jones um, back on the uh, on the second of December, and I got a great entry price just as just after Donald Trump tweeted that things perhaps weren't going so well. I went in with a short position in the Dow, and I held it all the way. But my problem was that, and my philosophy is, when you got a good position. Don't sit there and congratulate yourself. Make it bigger. Make it, make it as big as you humanly can. So I added to my winning position, and it really badly blew up in my face about 10, 15 minutes ago. So I went from having a nearly 150000 plus dollar position to being stopped out for absolutely nothing. And that stings a little bit. So if you ask me how am I handling that, well, it's not the first time that I've sat uh, on, a, on a position that turned out to be a nothing after having a big profit, and it probably won't be the last time either. But the flip side is then I'm also the kind of guy that will ride, say, the 26th of December 2018, where the Dow has an 1,100-point rally, and I have my biggest day ever. So it's par for the course. You, you, know, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. So I'll probably just walk around the garden for a few times and take a few deep breaths and then you know, count my blessings and then, then get back on the horse again. Well, you've got a lot of blessings, that's for sure. Tom, if the folks want to get your book, they just go to hello, uh, Tom, uh, the trader. It's hello at, at, oh, yes. Yeah, so I wrote a book about my experiences. Uh, it, I wouldn't call it a technical analysis book. And again, this is not a sales pitch. I am actually more than happy for, for people to receive it free of charge. It's a couple of hundred pages, about 60,000, 70,000 words. But it's basically just the mind of a high-stake trader. And if they want a copy of it, they can get it on hello at tradertom.com. Well, that's great. Well, listen, I want to wish you a very, very happy holidays. We'll have you on once again before the holidays. How about um, next uh, Friday? Would you be available maybe for a little bit of a chat? Of course I would be available. With the greatest of pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. We really, really appreciate you coming into the room today and sharing your experience with us. So uh, God bless, and I'll talk to you later this week, my friend, and shake off that stuff that they talk about you, because none of it's true, buddy. I know you too well. Thank you so much, Larry, and okay. uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Okay. You bet. That's Tom Hugard, folks. We'll have Tom on next Friday. But I wanted to share something with you here from one of our friends over in Kiev. Uh, this was one of our folks that was at the seminar that we gave in London where Tom talked about uh, his trading methodology and adding. And this gentleman here, uh, very nice young man. 
He's been trading for about a year and a half and been doing, he's been making money. And I want you to look at this very closely, folks. You see the little, the little, little boy and girl, the pink and blue circle there? The blues are the winning trades. The pinks are the losing trades. He's hitting 29%. These are euros, folks. He's trading in, in the euro contract and foreign exchange. And his win-loss ratio is now 29%. It had been around 55%, and he was making about 100 pips. Look what's happened now when he switched to adding to winning positions. He's gone from a 55% win rate to a 29% win rate and increased his profits by 180%. I mean, this is just really, uh, it's really amazing to see that. It's its its really, uh, it's, it's really quite spectacular. So practice it a little bit. You know, it's a different concept, but you hear the stories like we see with Tom and others that this might be a, a way that if you're just at the borderline, not quite doing it, maybe try it a little different and see what happens. You don't have to jump in right away, do, you know, one and two at a time, but to add to winners instead of, uh, you know, adding to you never want to add to a loser. That's the that's the absolute no no. That that's number one in anybody's book is never add to a losing position for two reasons. One is your analysis is wrong, and two is that you're increasing your risk exposure. And that's the exact opposite of what you're supposed to be doing, is to reduce risk exposure. That's the real key to be uh, doing this. So I suggest everybody, if you get a chance to get that book from Tom, it's a great book. I've I've read it and I've read it more than once, and it's got some great stories in it and the things that he talks about are spot on and it is different approach. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers 
subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we got a chance here to, you're right, Tucker, this is what I want to talk about. Here's what we started, one of the shows, uh, the ABCD pattern here. I wanted to talk about the fact that we had those big swings uh, yesterday in the uh, crude oil. And I, I want to show you what's happened, folks, because this is very, very interesting for two reasons. One, it's one of the patterns that Tom likes, trading strength and also selling weakness. But if you'll take a look here at this uh, crude oil, what's happened today, you'll see yesterday's action. I marked it. There were $4,000 in swings. That went, went from 59 down to 58, back to 59, back to 58, up to 59, back to 58. That's $4,000 in swings. And we came down to this level right here. You'll see the low today was exactly 382 of the low we made back here at 55.35 to the exact tick, 57.70. That was a 382 retracement there, and market has moved $2. Uh, what? Let me see. Yeah, just moved $2 almost. Yeah, it has moved $2 exactly uh, off of that 382 retracement. So that's why, you know, we look at those 382 retracements in, in strong trending markets because they do at times make a very, very strong spots for support and resistance. So the next level, of course, is uh, higher in here. We've got a $2 range. Well, we'll see what happens for the rest of the day. But the importance of those swings that happen there, I mentioned that it's either going to be uh, consolidation or uh, distribution or accumulation, and it was accumulation. And later on, they, they set with a, a loss of 59, the buck and a quarter loss down to 57.75, and now it's rallied $2. So very important to watch those things, folks, because they move very, very quickly. So that's about it. Uh, we'll see you all next week. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And please try to help some folks during the holiday season here that are having a lot of trouble because there's a lot of homeless in the world. Even here in Tucson, we have a homeless folks. So try to do something for folks that uh, don't have uh, some of the blessings that we have here. That's for sure. Uh, and remember, uh, we appreciate Tom coming on because uh, it's been uh, nice to hear him talk. 